Okay, so welcome everyone. We are in the second part of this uh, session. Uh, now we'll see the technology overview. Um, so next uh, slide. Um, so I will first talk about uh, um, what we will be using or what you will be using for reproducing the paper. So we have provided uh, an infrastructure, cloud infrastructure with storage. And this is uh, coming from the C-Scale project. So C-Scale stands for Copernicus EOSC Analytics Engine. And uh, EOSC is a European Open Science Cloud. So it's, uh, um, this is a... Uh, uh, different providers working together and trying to make a multi-cloud infrastructure and uh, delivering services for uh, European researchers and their collaborators. So this is open to everyone, but uh, you need to have at least one European collaborator. And C-Scale is uh, also a project It is funded by the European Commission. So it's part of this uh, EOSC European Open Science Cloud ecosystem. And it aims uh, at providing a unified access to a European hub of research data, tools, and services for innovation and education. Uh, and so what does it mean for C-Scale? This is mostly focused on Copernicus data. So this is for uh, cloud and uh, storage uh, um, mostly uh, storage data for uh, satellite Earth observation and in situ uh, data uh, services. So what we will do, uh, we will be using as part of the C-Scale project is uh, uh, we will be using the cloud and storage infrastructure they have deployed for, for you and for uh, running the Jupyter notebooks. So maybe next slide. So this is uh, uh, what we call the Panju deployment on the European Open Science Cloud. Um, and here, I mean, you don't need to understand all the details. What is very important to understand is first, what is at the bottom here? This is uh, the authentication. So um, if you are familiar with JupyterLab, when you have it on your laptop, you usually don't need to authenticate uh, yourself. So when you will be using this uh, Panju deployment, so this JupyterLab on the cloud, you will need to first authenticate yourself. And what we suggest in the documentation is to use uh, your ORCID identifier, which is a, a, a unique identifier that you can create and have for all the researchers, uh, for each researcher. So this is what we call the ES EOSC authentication or AAI for authentication. And uh, I don't remember this, uh, the second one, sorry. <laughs> Um, but um, um, we will uh, show later in the next slide. So what you will have here is what uh, we call this EOS Community Hub, which is a, a JupyterLab data science interface through JupyterLab, the Jupyter ecosystem. And you have a Python um, uh, kernel as well, uh, Julia and R, depending on what you will be choosing. And for the Python kernel, you will have a different flavor that I will describe later on with uh, GPUs. Uh, and uh, a full uh, Panjo ecosystem with uh, XRA, Panda, NumPy, etc. And the uh, uh, infrastructure, the cloud infrastructure, is on uh, European Open Science Cloud. So on uh, uh, European uh, cloud services, they are usually public clouds. Um, I think we can go to the next slide. So very important, uh, if you want to use a C-Scale Jupyter Hub, is uh, you need first to get an ORCID identifier. So if you don't have one, you can register. And here we put uh, the link to the registration page. So you usually need to have an email address um, and you need to enter your uh, like first name and last name. And this is an identifier. It is unique for each researcher and you can keep it independently on where you are working. And you don't need to be working in a research institute. It can be anywhere um, and uh, even in private companies. So uh, how do you then get access to the reproducible challenge Jupyter Hub? You also need to sign up. And here you need to ask for an account and we have put some details online, but here they are uh, summarized. So you need to uh, first get an account on this uh, EGI um, the development instance and you can use your ORCID identifier to authenticate. So this is why it is important to have an ORCID identifier first. And then when uh, you will click on this link here, you will enroll in what we call the uh, Panjo virtual organization which is uh, stated here. Um, and uh, we would like, if uh, possible, to uh, you add uh, some uh, uh, sentence about the reproducible challenge. So we know who is registering and for what in the statement of purpose when you are requesting to join the virtual organization. 
Um, and then you have to wait, and this is on our side. So we will we uh, we will get some requests from uh, uh, from you and from all the uh, reproducible challenge users, uh, and then we will uh, will accept and validate your enrollment, and then finally you will be able to access to the Jupyter Lab. If you try to access beforehand, so before we accept uh, you and validate your application. You will get a, an error saying you are uh, you don't have the permission, something like permission denied. So once you will click on this uh, link here for the access to the Jupyter Lab, uh, you will get something like here, and uh, you will need to uh, sign in with uh, uh, EGI checking, and this is where again you will use your ORCID identifier. Um, I think that's it for this one. And if you have any problem, uh, let us know. Uh, it's uh, very important you will be able, uh, you are able to access uh, the resources. It will be much faster. Uh, so we have different flavor depending on your needs. So once you have uh, uh, authenticate to the Jupyter Lab, you will have uh, uh, these uh, four uh, choices. So you will have to choose either between a, a default Panjo notebook, which is a, a notebook with all the Panjo software stack, like XRA and uh, uh, all the software stack we use uh, uh, for developing uh, Panjo related uh, uh, data science, but it doesn't have any GPU. So if you need some GPU, for instance, for training uh, um, or for, yeah, mostly for training some uh, uh, machine learning or deep learning, you have uh, two flavor, which is a ML notebook, and this is with a TensorFlow or the PyTorch notebook, and then this is with PyTorch. So depending on what you, you want to use, you can choose uh, the one or the other. Um, don't use a GPU enable if you are not using GPUs or if you don't need GPUs, because we have a limited amount of the GPUs uh, for all the users. And then if you are not programming in uh, Python, uh, you have uh, this uh, data science notebook where we have uh, R and Julia um, Flavor, so programming environment for, for you to use. The, all the Panjo related uh, um, notebooks, uh, they also have a, a desk gateway for uh, parallelization, but um, I will not detail this here right now. I think you can go to the next slide. Uh, we also have storage. So um, when you will log in and authenticate to the Jupyter Lab, you will have your home area. It's very small. So it don't store large amount of files. And uh, um, I think we recommend to share the files, the large files between the different members of your team. So don't put uh, anything uh, in your home area, mostly uh, put in uh, uh, all the larger file in uh, what we call this EGI MinIO object storage, which is uh, a remote storage that can be shared between the different members of your teams. So the, um, what we call MinIO console endpoint. So, so this is this link here. And when you click on this link, there's a, a web interface where you can authenticate. You will have uh, something like here on the right hand side, and you will uh, see this login with SSO uh, checking. Always use uh, this uh, uh, option. So even if you have a, a specify uh, a password afterwards, you always need to use this option. Otherwise you will have a permission denied. And again, here, when you log in, you can use your ORCID identifier. So this is why, again, your ORCID identifier is a unique way to access all the different services. Um, and if you don't know how to use the object storage and uh, this, uh, this is uh, completely unknown to you, don't worry. So don't panic. We're, this is also part of the learning process. You will learn how to use uh, uh, this object storage and we will guide you uh, through the process. Um, so you will see in the documentation online, we are talking about uh, uh, like keys, access keys that you will need for uh, accessing private uh, uh, data uh, when you create buckets. What we uh, recommend is to never share the access keys to anyone, even uh, people in your team. So you should be able to have your private key and still be able to access a bucket within the team. And again, if you don't understand, you probably, uh, if you haven't tried, you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, we will come back to this later on uh, when you really start working with object uh, storage and data. I think we can move to the next slide. Yeah, so here we are providing some guidance on how you, are, you can organize yourself in your team. Uh, it's only 
optional. It's a, a, a guidance, and this is based on the experience we have with a different hackathon. But uh, uh, feel free to uh, to change this organization. So what we really suggest is to uh, um, assign one person as a team lead, and this person uh, will own the GitHub repository, uh, and this is where you will put the final Jupyter notebook. So it, uh, uh, we explain on, online, and uh, Alejandro, you will show later how you can uh, uh, use the template uh, that uh, we provide from the environmental data science book. And we create a GitHub repository, uh, and this is the main repository for uh, the Jupyter notebook. We also suggest that you uh, define or you assign a technical lead. Uh, and this is mostly to uh, uh, someone that can get an overview of all the developments, but not necessarily all the details. And uh, uh, this is also important, for instance, when you will have to report or ask questions uh, during the uh, coffee meeting or the session we'll have later on and for the final presentation. So we, someone that can keep track of uh, all the different uh, developments. Um, and finally, uh, a data manager. Uh, is also a very good uh, person to uh, uh, have in, in your team. So to assign someone as a data manager, and this is a person. So the team lead will uh, uh, own the GitHub repository. So it's more on the software side and the data manager is more on the data side. And uh, we suggest that this uh, uh, person will uh, get an overview of all the data that you create and you share and uh, uh, will be also be in charge of the creation of the data buckets. So again, we have some information online on how you can create buckets, and uh, we recommend to have at least one bucket per team, uh, and then each of member of the team can access uh, uh, the bucket through um, uh, private keys. Uh, don't forget that uh, uh, you can help each other, so within a team and between teams. This is really important. This is open science, and open science is all about collaboration. Uh, so we hope we'll, you will have fun. And uh, of course, if you are stuck, don't stay stuck and uh, ask a question in the repro challenge help. I think we can move, yeah. And again, we are also providing for guidance and uh, some uh, recommendation on uh, the workflow for uh, the notebook project. So um, the first step is uh, everyone, and I think maybe you have done it. You read the paper you have been assigned in your team and uh, try to identify the data needed, uh, data that is used in the, um, in the paper and also the software. So uh, then you can make a, already a list of uh, what data you will have to upload and uh, what software you will be using. Then the technical lead, uh, this is why we are, uh, we are suggesting to have a technical lead, uh, will choose a notebook template. So it's mostly we have different templates depending on the programming language, if you have a, a Python or, and Julia, or Julia, and then you will be using this template to create a new repository. So and only we recommend that only one person does it in your team. Um, and then you will add some collaborators, so all the members of the team, so you can all write into the repository. Uh, again, the team lead or owner of the repository can uh, add all the team members as collaborators. If you have any issue here, you can ask for help, and we have also some documentation on GitHub. Create issues to organize and dispatch the work, so you may use a GitHub project. Um, but um, yeah, depending on the how familiar you are your GitHub with GitHub, uh, uh, it may be uh, easier to um, to explain, I mean, or to have a very simple process for uh, organizing your team. So make sure that uh, in your team, everyone knows uh, uh, the process and uh, can sh share the procedure to, to work together. Then finally, the data manager can create a bucket so uh, where you can read and write and to allow all the team members to share the data and work collaboratively. So the, the goal is not to have a duplication of all the data in your private space, but uh, to share um, the data in one bucket or several buckets if you, if you need to. Uh, and then each of you will get a, a key, an access key to access and be able to read and write on this bucket. So don't share these uh, keys. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, you, we have some recommendation when you write uh, buckets, but you will see it uh, online. I mean, this is usually you use this repro hyphen team hyphen the uh, number of your um, team, 
and then you can put any uh, value afterwards like data or whatever is uh, suitable um, next slide and uh, yeah so here this is um, mostly a link to where you can get all the information about the c scale infrastructure and the jupyter lab and it's mostly a repetition of what i have explained next slide Yes, very important. So uh, we try to be as much uh, sustainable as possible. So save resources and uh, reduce your energy footprint. So when uh, uh, you are opening a Jupyter Lab and a Jupyter Notebook, it will remain open for a certain time. When you are done, uh, we ask you kindly to shut down and close your session uh, so that uh, you uh, really stop all the uh, cloud computing resources that are running. So it's uh, important. Uh, First, because uh, it can save a bit of uh, computing time, but it's also very important for the energy footprint. And don't worry, your data will not be lost. So when you log in again, you will have exactly the same environment with all the data. Uh, next uh, slide. Uh, yeah, so that's what we were men I was mentioning before, uh, to organize in, in your team all the different activities, or uh, you can have some kind of task board to visualize the teamwork. Uh, and here, this is a, a, an example, so some guidance, very simple way to organize the work with a different uh, tab, with IDs, what you are doing, uh, uh, what uh, you need help or some bias, and what has been done. And so you can move the task from uh, one uh, one tab to another, and it will help you to break down the big goals into small tasks. So this is uh, uh, recommended because uh, uh, it helps you uh, not to be overwhelmed and to set some realistic goals for, for instance, for a week. So you can have it per week. And also an opportunity to work together. So it's very important for collaboration that uh, what you do is visible to all the other team members. And it also can, uh, uh, usually it helps uh, to generate new ideas and especially if you are stuck here, other member of your team can uh, help uh, help you. Um, then it, uh, I think that's, uh, that's it. Yeah, again, make sure you don't uh, get stuck uh, on something and always ask for help if you need. So you can ask for help uh, with issue uh, within the GitHub repository you have set up for your team, but also in the Slack channel. Oh, okay, so that's you, I think, uh, Aniando. Uh, thank you, Anne. I guess uh, you covered uh, nicely, like technologies, in particular the cloud infrastructure that you will have access to use for free and very important how you can clarity use the same data storage. And I hope that you maximize the resources and also use uh, in a sustainable way. It's very important to, to shut, shut down the your session every time you finish and you don't you are trying to uh, calculate the estimate footprint energy footprint of the challenge so uh, this is a common goal to try to uh, minimize uh, the footprint okay so i guess now i, I will explain you further about the ADS book and i guess uh, of course you you will you will be free to experiment with the cloud infrastructure a, re a kind reminder that uh, you you will have to have a, a single notebook where you summarize all your repository uh, findings and deviations that maybe you have, but uh, let, let, let's start, which is the process. So for this, I, I just gonna try to have a live demo. So I'm gonna go to the resource that we have for the, for the ADS book. And uh, EDS book, uh, you can find uh, edsbook.org uh, uh, website. And essentially here in the welcome, you can find there are like in, in publishing, there is a chapter about publishing and we have certain guidelines that is the same one that I explained in the first session where you have the different stages. And you are gonna be, uh, I'm trying to, uh, to, to be get involved in all, all these stages. So the first stage that we have at the, at the environmental DS book is the notebook idea. And if you go to the guide to the, for authors, you will find this notebook idea is, is essentially what you need to do in your first uh, first team discussion on interaction. So where you want to in somehow uh, document what you are gonna do and how you are gonna 
achieve the reproducibility uh, like aspects of your paper. So what we suggest first is to open this novel idea and essentially is to click here in the issue. And you need to go to the novel idea that you see here and you can say get a star. And essentially with your team, what you need to do is to try to uh, complete all this information that is asking you. So what is the novel about? So you can say a lot of uh, very random tests. You need to fill here uh, what kind of data science component that you uh, uh, this notebook is about. Just just in case and facilitating you, I just need you just need to mark here reproducibility in the submission type. Maybe you just type here in other uh, because this is a submission. There are other type of submission. The standard one that we people are regularly publishing notebooks and especially issues that we are working that in the future. But essentially, is to feel like that uh, this this aspect. Here you you maybe essentially check which programming language you are planning to do this. So this as an example, I'm gonna do this in Python, and please try to double check this stuff about the checklist. So please check that the models or data of of the papers that you are gonna use are public and where possible they have a license and citation, and see if you are gonna reuse existing code base of the original. A paper a software or whatever the author share. And very important that uh, you try to maximize open source packages and so and so on. So please try to complete these checklists. And once you are done, you just submit this issue. So essentially you will have something like this. You complete this and in additional information, you can write all about the packages or things that you you you, you think that are very important like for you, for instance, I, I can say I will use its array or maybe there is a, this existing resource, you can uh, write all these ideas with your thing here. Very important that you open this issue. So you just create this issue like that. You submit this issue. And with this, essentially uh, later, uh, we will try to track this issue and this is gonna be very important in the submission for our process. So after cre creating this notebook idea, then the next step is to start the notebook repository. And it's here where uh, with the ADS book community, we are providing you a kind of templates where you can use it. And these templates are essentially GitHub repositories where you, you, you can set up your uh, software requirements in Python, R or Julia. So just imagine that you are want to do in, in Python. So it's just to click here over the Python one. And you have this template that is hosted in the ADS book gallery where we have other notebooks. But this template have as well all the steps that you need in order to use this template. So essentially uh, the, the lead, the thin lead or technical lead as uh, Anne suggests is gonna uh, try to uh, have this one in the personal repository of the, of the GitHub account that this person had and you can customize your name here, as you, say, as you can see here, you can make that public or private. In, pre in pre preference, we prefer if you can have this public, you, you, you should clone and edit. And this is the way that you can work on this in, the, in your local or remote machine. For instance, this, if you want to work on, on with this template in the cloud infrastructure, here we have the steps to do that. And as well, if you want to do some uh, branch for uh, making some specific, specific changes, and this is a template that you will have access. So essentially it's already a standard template where you have the notebook title, you have the context, you have the purpose description. So please uh, refer to existing uh, notebooks that were published already and try to see what uh, authors uh, wrote in each of these sections. Uh, then you need to open a pull request. And every time that you're making a change, a change over here, you will have a kind of a test this PR on binder. And you, I, will, I will make an example of that and you will see what is happening. And essentially what we are gonna test here uh, with this binder is the thing that uh, we have this submission by 11 May where we are gonna check that you're not voting. So how is, is, the, is working and is ready for starting the peer review process. How we are testing this. So we are gonna check that the, all the your not boot cells are running in the binder on in the binder images and uh, just uh, bear, bear in mind that the binder have very limited uh, resources so you cannot run expensive computations like training or running a model in this binder we 
we suggest that you uh, try to train the models in the cloud infrastructure and try to save these models in as another repository. And basically in the notebook, what, you, what you're doing is to load the model weights if you are doing any fancy machine learning modeling. If there is the, the, the paper is different about that, you don't need to potentially do in that. But if it's about training models, you cannot do in this binder instance. Uh, okay, and uh, all this you can find there. And very important, when you have the first working version, it's very important that you transfer to the EDS book gallery organization. And here are the steps. This transfer is very important because uh, with that, we have certain technologies in the EDS book gallery that they are the technologies that reviewers is gonna, they are gonna use to provide you feedback and you will have comments in, in, the, in your notebook uh, thanks to this technology that we already set up in the ADS book gallery organization. Okay, so let's 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 assume that everything is ready. So I went through all these readme. It's very important that you, if you get the stock on this one and you don't know what to do next, please ask in the Slack channel. So let's use this template. And yeah, for instance, I'm gonna say this is the uh, team team zero. Team zero paper, team zero, something like that. And I'm making a short description. So the, the repository, 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 and to reproduce paper, title, la, 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 something like that. And as I say, it's better that you, you make this public in that way, in the, you don't mind anyway. Public is the only way that you maybe can have feedback from everyone as well feedback from other things. So don't be scared to leave that as a public, but if you have any concern, you can keep that private. That, but where possible, keep that public. So if you create that one, that's gonna be, I am the technical lead of my team, assuming I am a team zero. And what Anne suggests is that you can add other, 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 other members to, uh, uh, to, this, to this repository, how you are doing that. Essentially, here in collaborators. Sorry, I just need to write here my, my credential. For instance, I will I, I will invite Anne to this. And Anne, she's gonna be collaborators, and in that way, she can make uh, changes. And uh, after this, she's gonna be able to write uh, the repository. Uh, so so far, this is the first step to Trump to use the template. And you, as I say, you can clone this one in your remote, uh, in your remote virtual machine that you are pro we are provided through the cloud infrastructure, or you can make changes locally. So I'm gonna try to connect to the uh, EGI, the 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 public, uh, the the cloud Jupyter Hub that we are providing for you. Let me do that, and I'm gonna show you how to do the cloning in this in this machine. Uh, the access to this is uh, through this. Uh, this is to this is the access that we have for this is through this link. Maybe we are gonna make that available. Okay, I cannot open here. I will try to open in in Firefox. Sorry, <laughs> I am at the Turing. Sometimes okay, I will sign up here. I, I am using my GitHub account, but in, I guess in most of your cases, you are using the ORCID. So as I'm saying, it depends what is your notebook about. Uh, in my case, uh, the example, I will use the, the Pangeo notebook that is already with Python and have certain Pangeo stack. And this data science, it, it doesn't have this Pangeo like us, but I won't go display it. If you are training something fancy with TensorFlow or Torch, uh, you can use this other two uh, flavors. So I'm just gonna start the server here. Maybe Anne, we have any questions in the audience because I'm happy maybe to address them while this is running. We don't have direct question on the chat, but if okay. you have any question, you can uh, either write it down in the chat or um, just the talk. Okay, this is uh, opening now. I can I, I ask want... a question while it's opening still? Yeah, so sure. Sure. Yeah. The Jupyter Node Hub, uh, Hub notebooks, are they in any way shareable between kind of 
So I use VS Code, for example, and you can use like Copilot and some of these suggestion tools in there. Do you have to edit everything in there or can you kind of export them back and forth? VS Code can handle I uh, just Jupyter Notebooks as well. So is this just kind of about moving the notebook back and forth or is it limited to the website? Thanks for any idea, do you know? Uh, at the moment, we are not having any integration with this uh, VS Code. I guess we suggest to use this uh, Jupyter Hub uh, because uh, I mean, like this is something that you can do with your team, but if you are experienced and you want to set up this in your VS Code, I guess it's possible. Correct me if I run. So you, these you would can be just add files in, uh, in GitHub, right? So. Yes. So you, you can uh, you can add an extension. Uh, so in the this uh, Jupyter Lab, you can install whatever you want. I don't know if it answers to your question, uh, but there is no direct integration with VS Code. Unfortunately, there is no be. But we you can, can also put wait, it wait. in uh, in the shared not, uh, shared object storage. Yeah, uh, yeah. Please, if you want, uh, we, as well. If you see any specific thing that you want to ask about this, we can ask as well with the with the expert that we have Friday, and he's gonna explain better about the this infrastructure, and maybe he's aware about the connection with VS Code, right? That's okay. We can also ask him in between. Ask him. Yeah, yeah, we can ask in between if that's okay. That's a very important question. Okay, let me continue. And just want to show you uh, how you can achieve the, the repository here. Once you, you launch this, sorry, I'm gonna clean this. You you have this empty. Sorry, you don't have like this mess because I was experimenting with this before, but I'm just gonna remove this. And essentially to clone is just essentially going here, clone repository, and you type here your, the, the full uh, the full uh, path for your repository that you 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 have in your personal uh, uh, GitHub account. So let me go here. I just type here and I clone that. And you will see here paper thing. And if you open this, you will have all this uh, repository with the noble title. Basically, you can have here a nice a nice title of your paper or whatever title you want to have like random title and you can make changes like uh, describe the torture the purpose of the use case like uh, this notebook blah 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 something like that and uh, very important uh, you can start like documenting here whatever you you want to do we suggest first to import the libraries and create a separate folder where you are having all your inputs and outputs. And uh, you can, as you can see, you can run this cell now because you already have this software there. So any change that you made to this, for instance, now that we added some random title, we, we can do here and go to the repository and we can uh, push this in GitHub. So essentially you need to commit the message like let's say like minimal uh, add title for instance, Okay, we need to identify. I'm gonna identify myself. It's very important that you identify. Let's see. Okay. Sorry, I need to write as my username. Okay. Oh, maybe it's not making the changes. I not need to commit this, sorry. Okay. So I, I need to add further file, sorry. I was uh, sorry, well, I was struggling with that. I need to add the file that I changed. And essentially I changed this file. So it just add and then I do the commit. And then I'm doing the push. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was doing there certain mess. I need to check the password of this. Sorry, you will see a very ugly stuff there of the password. I don't want to share, but let me let, let me let me post the maybe. Mm -hmm. And essentially, this is one step, but essentially you can do as well. I'm gonna do a short demo inside the the repository that I have that I created. I just restart here the recording. And this paper team, for instance, is very important that you you create first a branch. 
you can create a branch here where you can call this is gonna be a title for instance you create this branch and you can make any change over the notebooks uh, i'm just gonna do very manually this is no good practice it's better that you open in the in the in the remote uh, server and essentially what i'm gonna do is manually here change the name like title heads something like that i commit the change here and then i when i go paper team we I don't see your uh, i don't see your screen now eh? okay sorry need to get that sorry sorry Okay, I'm getting back. Well, uh, unfortunately, I cannot uh, share the, the the password there in the in the online Jupyter Hub. But whatever you need to do is to create, for instance, a branch. You may a change in this branch, and when you create the pull request, this is gonna automatically launch a kind of binder. And this binder is essentially uh, what we are gonna check in this submission that you have 11 May uh, uh, and that everything is working, but you don't need to do this every step. Try to work in the Jupyter Hub as, as you can. And then when you have the first working version, please try to test that is working in this binder and at least uh, someone else can, can run that. I guess this is still generating the, the binder image. Let's see. This is gonna generate a, a kind of binder uh, button there, as you can see here, it's just to follow these steps and you will have this test binder. And essentially when you have the, the working version, what, I, what we are gonna do is to check that is running in your binder. And in that way, it's very important that uh, you try to, as well to update the requirements of your environment here. So you need as well to whatever you, you know that you are using and the version that you're using in the notebook, please declare all dependencies here in this environment. Uh, even the environment of the of the of the images are there. Uh, we are trying to only use the specific dependencies that you have in your notebooks. Um, let's go to the notebooks and see if it generates the the binder. Oh, apparently, this is still like generating this. So we need to wait until it's generated. Okay, so that's that's I guess that's everything about about the this book. So one you have this, and just imagine everything is ready. You, what you need to do is just to transfer this notebook to the EDS book organization, and it's here where you need to do the transfer. So essentially, it's just to write here the the name of the organization that is EDS book gallery, and then you need to type here to confirm. And this is going to be transferred to the EDS book gallery. And if you go to the EDS book gallery organization that is here, EDS book gallery, gallery organization, you will see that your repository is there listed here, paper team. And here is where you, we, we are doing all the, all the review process. So essentially, this is going to be the reference and we have all the technologies where all, all the reviews start to make in and suggest the changes. So all things will need to do the changes here where possible uh, because we have all the settings there. Uh, after, when you have it, this is very important. There is a other process that we are gonna call pre-review and we need to create this pre-review. We are gonna create this pre-review in the main repository that is uh, here, essentially, we are gonna open an issue that is gonna call pre-review and then you, we will inform you who are the, who are the, who are the, the reviewers of your, or your, or your, or your, or your paper. So no worries, this is something that we are gonna be there. And we are starting a kind of template and checklist and uh, you will have the review there and you need to make changes in your main repository here until uh, reviewers are happy. I don't know if, it, if that's okay for now. Uh, I guess most of the documentation is available in the Repository Challenge. Here, if you go to Repository Challenge, you can follow all the steps 
and maybe this demonstrator uh, is just as a reference of the main step that you need to do. Basically, you just, just need to try to follow this workflow of a notebook project. And with that, I guess you will be ready for doing this submission process. Uh, something that we are thinking, and it's very important to say, so maybe in the development, uh, you will have many notebooks that are very important for the final notebook. So feel free to add all the notebooks that you use in your experimentation here in the main in the in the in the in the repository. But the repo, the the notebook that you are aiming to have the final version, the name should be notebook, uh, notebook IPYMB. That's a very important to say. You can add all the notebooks or supporting your your reproducibility aspects of your of your team here. But the main notebook should be named like this. Yeah, I guess I stop there, Anne, if that's okay. Yeah, I think uh, you gave a very good overview and um, I'm, I'm sure we'll have to uh, uh, probably go back to the video when we are getting closer to uh, the submission because uh, it's probably a bit overwhelming uh, today to remember everything, but at least we exactly. have it for reference. So we, we have we we have clean it uh, this Friday and and the Friday and the Friday uh, Friday after. So please use this space to have questions or something that you understand about the documentation. We are happy to update and make that clear for everyone. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. <laughs>